The Oracle Network. Welcome to this Christmas special of Once Upon a Nightmare. Now, I know you are thinking the family stone. Really? Horror? But horror comes in all forms. And yes, that can mean spending Christmas for some, I'm going to say for some, with family. But I absolutely love this film. So I wanted to talk about it. But as always, I am your host, Lorraine. And I basically messaged a mate of mine yesterday and said to her, will you come on and talk about the family stone with me? And she said yes. So I am joined by Ray from Not Before Coffee. Hey, Ray. Hey, how are you? Grand. Thank you for coming on very, very, very last minute. (laughs) That's fine. I've been recording today myself, so it was kind of good timing. I'm in that flow. Well, you didn't pick up my hints that I sent you. Which hints? What, you mean the ones that you were saying, oh, well, we should talk about this in a podcast? Yes, Those hints. I was watching this the other day and I was measured and I was like, going, oh, because like Ray, Ray's podcast is more about films like this than what mine is. And I was like, oh, I'd love to do it. Expecting her to go, why don't we do it? And she just didn't say that. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm doing it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. I'm still doing it. <laughs> I'm just not on my podcast. But now I have to do more of the work because I have to bloody edit it. But <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, I've already done my editing of the day. I know. I know. Um, so how are you anyway? I am not too bad. Getting, doing what everyone else is doing, you know, prep for Christmas, baking, wrapping presents. I really hate wrapping presents with a passion. I That's did the thing today as well. There are a few jobs, I think, that everybody has that sort of uh, about. Mm. And mine are, as a general rule, I hate washing up. You do. So I'm so glad I now have a dishwasher. Yeah, I really do hate washing up. It is like my key household chore that I loathe. Mm. And I don't like wrapping presents. Yeah, no, I... I don't like wrapping presents, so I sent my husband to get me a bottle of Prosecco so I could wrap the presents. So then it made it a lot easier while uh, watching telly. And yeah, mine is ironing. So I iron with Prosecco and true crime documentaries. (laughs) (laughs) That's the thing, you can't really wash up with anything. Mm, Yeah, that's true. But, you know, (laughs) just have one on the side. (laughs) (laughs) No, I, I I know what I would happen if I washed up while drinking. I'd end up in A and E. Yeah, true, true. Um, but for those who haven't actually listened to any episodes before, if this is your first episode, I actually have had Ray on um a couple of times. We did Firestarter and more recently Shaun of the Dead. We also did Gremlins last Gremlins, Christmas. Gremlins, that's what it is. I was writing this and I was like, I'm sure we've done another one. And I was like, Yeah, nah, I can't remember. So we did we, we did Gremlins last Christmas on that's yours weird. and yeah. the holiday on mine. That's true. That's true. So for so anyone who hasn't listened to Gremlins, Firestarter and Shaun of the Dead, she's on again. Who are you? <laughs> <laughs> You should know by now. I'm I'm Ray and I host a podcast called Not Before Coffee because I have a um, predilection for coffee and I drink a lot of it, which is why I'm so bounding with energy all the time. You'll attest to that, won't you? <laughs> okay. I don't think it has a single effect on my energy levels at all. Mm-hmm. And I tend to talk about films primarily rom-coms at the moment and the odd Disney film here and there oh that's cute (laughs) the odd Disney film here and there and also about books about books so my podcast comes out at the moment uh, I was just thinking (laughs) well yeah because it's a bit like all over the place at the moment isn't it well no it's still coming out on Mondays at the moment okay yeah Ray read five books in the past like two minutes (laughs) <laughs> 10 days actually i'm i'm on book six i'm on book six that's right i haven't read ma- that many in a year yeah but then I, i've just been looking at my stats and i read twelve thousand one hundred pages over the year whereas last year i read twenty thousand four hundred pages in the year so i'm a bit behind schedule i listen to audio book audio audio books there's nothing wrong with that yeah, because I can't sit still, you see, so I have to listen while I'm doing stuff. 
I listen to audiobooks while I'm reading a book. Yeah, you fucking weird man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently listening to Stephen Fry's second mythos book called Heroes, which is really good. It's, My brother it's actually, used to read his stuff actually a lot. It's quite calming listening to his voice. Mm. So I listen to that like I'm listening to a podcast and I'm reading the, I think it's about the 20th Agatha Raisin. Oh, I don't know who that is. Uh, she's a, well, she's the character in the books. Oh, right. Okay. Um, yeah. No, but I love Stephen Fry. So as it's Christmas and I don't usually do this, have you been watching? You're like, what is she going to ask me? Um, have you been watching, give us a couple of Christmas films that you've been watching because it's a Christmas Okay, episode. Christmas films. I recently watched Noel. Um, <laughs> yeah, I watched, I've watched the Santa Claus twice. Okay. I watched the awful new Home Alone film. The new one? Yeah, Home Sweet Home Alone. Don't watch it if you like the memory of ha of um, Home Alone because it will try and destroy it How new it is it? You. It came out this year. Home Sweet Home, I've never heard of it. Yes, it's a Disney Plus exclusive Aww. um yeah and i know how you feel about disney plus even Aww. though we watched this film on disney plus no i don't feel anything about disney plus i love disney especially the older disney and i also have been watching hawkeye which is a christmas marvel series i watched two episodes of that with my brother the other day but like three and four and now i've decided that i'm going through because on disney they do them in in like, order yeah so i'm gonna do that of all the films and the TV shows. Yeah, I've yeah. done that. I yeah. did that in the order that they came out, not the order that they actually are. Yeah. But I'm currently watching Hawkeye. It's the last episode on Ooh. Wednesday. So, boo. Yeah. Hiss. I'm sad. And I also watched Arthur Christmas and Rise that. of the Guardians. Okay. So you've watched quite a bit. And I watched, obviously, The Family Stone. I have you watched, watched the holiday yet? No, I'm saving that for Christmas Eve night okay. because I want to get through the entirety of Christmas season without having heard last Christmas. Oh, okay, cool. Oh, and I've okay. managed it every year for the last three years. So nice one. Yeah, I have yeah. to not listen to. That no, song. I watched. I watched the holiday because you know it has to be done. Yeah, and I watched a film called Office Christmas Party. Mm, that sounds yeah. like fun it was well jason bateman's in it jennifer aniston's in it and it's just one of those films where you just go okay <laughs> after you watch it and i did watch um the happiest season again i didn't realize it was again until i was watching it i watched this really weird thing with bill murray in it on netflix this weird christmas thing that he did oh is that his christmas thing with miley cyrus yes weird isn't it's it just, kind of like a chat showy type thing? I don't know what it was, um, but it was weird. And I watched Noel today in preparation because you're doing an episode on it that's coming out on Monday. Monday, yes. Yeah. So I watched that because, and I love Anna Kendrick, and I really liked it. I really that's liked good. it. That's good. So I'm interested to see what you have to say about it. Well, I love the little reindeer. I know it's so cute. Yes. Cool. But we're going to talk about another Christmas film, and that is The Family Stone. You don't have to be nervous. I'm not. They're going to love you. There's nothing harder than joining a family. He intends to give that girl my mother's wedding ring. Especially one like the Stones. She's got this throat clearing tick. It's like she's digging for clams. Ready? <clears throat> yeah, they're all watching, you know. They have a funny way of making you feel at home. Hello. You have a lovely home. All the better to entertain you, my dear. Don't dilly-dally there, pretty lady. We're all going to be down here talking about you. She is completely uptight. I am not sleeping with you in your bed, in your parents' no, house. Separate bedrooms. It's so silly. Are Everett and Meredith going to get married? Four words. Second, second, second word. word. Beekeeper. Ring. Bride. Always a bridesmaid, never a bride. They hate me. They hate they me. They just met you. I just figured you'd give her a hard time, have a good laugh, but then back off. Meredith's checking into the inn. And now her sister Julie's giving up Christmas with her entire family in order to be with Meredith. 
I'm ashamed of all of you. <laughs> Even you. Hi. Hey. Hey. Hi. This holiday season. He's gonna ask me for that ring. Mom, enough about the ring. From the producer of Sideways. You have a freak flag. You just don't fly it. We will try to behave like a civilized family. I don't care whether you like me or not. Oh, of course you do. Claire Danes, Diane Keaton, Rachel McAdams, Dermot Mulroney, Craig T. Nelson, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Luke Wilson. The Family Stone. Nothing. It's just that we're all we've got. And you! You're the worst! I'm the worst! Boy. The Family Stone was written and directed by a Thomas Bazooka. Is it Bakuz Bazooka? Bazooka. And- bazooka and released in 2005 it had a budget of 18 million and it just made under 93 million so i think it did well it has a really big cast and actually it's got dermot moroni as everett who brings home his uptight girlfriend meredith who is played by sarah jessica parker she is met by his somewhat difficult family mum sybil played by diane keaton dad kelly played by creighty nelson Bitchy sister Amy, played by Rachel McAdams, and relaxed brother Ben, played by Luke Wilson. As the whole experience gets worse, she calls on her younger sister Julie, played by Claire Danes, to come and rescue her. And things take an unexpected turn over at Stonehouse. Stonehouse. (laughs) I wonder if they picked the name Stone intentionally. What, because of the ring? Well, no, that's the thing. Not because of the ring. Because they they kind of stonewall her. They do. They do. Do you like this film? It's not a bad film. It's not one that I'd I'd honestly say, oh my God, I have to watch this every single year, like Arthur Christmas and The Santa mm. Claus, which mm. I've already watched twice. And yeah, and The Holiday, which I do watch, but I wait to watch for reasons I've already mentioned. So it's not a bad film. It's... <sighs> I know that Sarah Jessica Parker apparently got cast for this while she was filming the last season of Mm. Sex and the City. And the reason she chose the part was because Meredith was so different from Carrie. Because she is very, very straight laced and tight lipped and she is very proper. Yeah, no, I read that as well. And how, because Carrie, do you watch Sex and the City? I've seen it, but it's not one of the shows that I can honestly say I remember everything that happened in it. Well, well, Carrie is very like, you know, she moves her hands a lot. She's very expressive and everything's like, you know, over the top type thing. Some uh, quite a bit of the time with her. But she said that in this, they were like, no, you can't do that. You need to be like, because she's quite rigid, isn't she? She's kind of like, yes, keeps her hands to herself and all that kind of stuff. So that was a conscious thing that she she actually had to stop doing. Because obviously she played, she played Carrie for like nearly six years at this stage. Well, it probably would have been six years because that was, I think, Sex and C- Six Sex and the City ended in two thousand and four, and this came out in two thousand and five. Um, so she would have kind of been on the end of that. But yeah, it it is very very different to Carrie. Yeah, that's the thing. I can't help wondering every time I see her character, my immediate thought is she is so socially useless. Mm. that I wonder if she is neuroatypical. Yeah, she she does, because her behavior is so bizarre to me, because obviously I've had the experience of, you know, I have in-laws and I've met them and stuff like that. But she she does herself like no favors. But then she's like, so she goes in at the start and she's kind of very like uptight. She's not really saying much. She's very like the dad goes to hug her and she puts out her hand to shake his hand. Yeah. Do you know this type of thing? And then they ask her about how they met and she's just like got verbal diarrhea. It just, she can't shut up. Like it's really like she, yeah, she almost very does, unusual. Yeah. She almost, it's like, she doesn't know who she is because at the very beginning, when we see her with Everett in the shop and he's buying a present, you know, it's all, I almost feel like from the very start, he doesn't even like her. 
Yeah, I. that's the thing. I mean, I do get that feeling. In fact, there's so little chemistry in any interaction that they have mm. that you wonder why he's with her, especially yeah. when you see how he reacts when he initially encounters Julie when they go to pick her up from the bus. Well, exactly, because when you one thing I noticed in this, if you like at the beginning, they're very like even his hair is perfectly, you know, gelled up. Her hair is perfectly tied back. There's not a hair out of place. They're dressed very smart. And it's almost like that's what each other's partner should look like. Yeah, they're to match exacting. Each other. They're a professional couple. So that's what they should look like. And I noticed that, you know, at the end when. I know we're kind of we're going to be jumping all over the place here. Yeah. So when, yeah. So obviously, as as Ray mentioned, when he looks at the sister. So the only time you, the first time you see, uh, what's his name, Everett, kind of like his eyes spring open is when he sees Meredith's sister Julie, who is played by Claire Danes, and yep. she obviously has a spark there too because she kind of gives a little bit of a look, but not too much. Totally the opposite of her sister. Yeah, they're they're basically not the same person. That yeah, they're, they're, you wouldn't think they were related. No, at all. And I think it's interesting that how when he goes to Julie, like especially towards the end, he's dressed a lot more casually. And when she's with, so she, I know we're really jumping around the place here. So she <laughs> ends up kind of being a bit more towards the other brother, and she's very casual, you know. So it's like they were like the way they were because them two were together. But once they kind of find their real person they then completely change how they look her hair is down she's casual he's in a she, hoodie she you seems know. to fit in far more at yeah. the end it's as though they found the someone who made them who they were meant to be but at the same time not one of his family makes her feel welcome well exactly I think obviously let's go back more to the beginning than straight yes. to the end but um yeah so she so Meredith goes into this house and let's face it, they don't do a good job of making her feel welcome. Not the dad. The dad is fine at the start. Um, but the mother, I mean, it's your worst nightmare. It is your absolute worst nightmare. I remember going to meet my now in-laws and I'd met the brother. He was perfectly fine. I hadn't met the mother or the kid, the, the, daughter, the sisters yet. And Dev told me that his sisters would not be nice to me, that they wouldn't be nice. Oh, that's comforting. Exactly. So I stood out his house for 10 minutes, basically shitting myself because I was like, my God, I'm going to meet that. I mean, they were lovely. They were absolutely, we still joke about it to this day. They were absolutely fine with me. And so was his mum. But, you know, I know that feeling of feeling really like, oh my God, I'm going to meet them all. And you're like, it's, it's, it's nerve wracking, like, you know, but they yeah. do like the mother I mean, she knows, she knows that he isn't into it. Like she can tell straight off that this is not the girl for him, especially Yeah, but when... then I think the thing is they're going by, because the only one who has met Meredith is it's his Amy. younger sister, oh. Amy. And she Witch. is, yeah, she is, do you know, she actually won awards for this. Did she? Yeah, she won the Breakthrough Actress of the Year gong, as well as a Teen Choice Actress in a Comedy gong. And I'm struggling to think how this was a comedy. There is an element of comedy to it. But I wouldn't say that it was comedy. I'd say it was closer to drama, especially when you consider... Drama. Yeah, in, especially when you consider the underlying story mm. that's thread through it with the mother. Yeah, no, 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 I agree. Like... Yeah, because Amy isn't nice. And I've also read about how Rachel McAdams found it quite difficult playing that role. Like she felt really bad being, because she was in Mean Girls, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Yeah. And she she apparently felt really, like she struggled with this because of how mean she had to be. Because there's this one bit in it where Sarah Jessica Parker is like, what is your basically your problem? I don't care what you think about me. And she kind of takes that, um, Amy takes that sip of coffee and goes, oh, of course you do. I thought, yeah. you bitch. Like, what an absolute cow. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I mean, Meredith goes into this house unarmed, doesn't realise that she is stepping into a very volatile situation mm. for whatever reason. Mm. And not one of them makes her feel welcome. And then she keeps on opening her mouth and putting her foot in it. 
It's almost <laughs> as though the entire thing was they were setting her up to fail. Mm. It's kind of like they were waiting for her to say something like, I mean, the situation at the dinner party where when her sister has just arrived mm. and they're all sitting down to dinner and Sybil says, oh, I'd have liked it if all my children had been gay. I know. It was such... You um, are setting someone <sighs> like Meredith up to put their foot in, put both their feet in their mouths. Yeah. Because she... then she says... It's it's oh it's a mess. It it's like because I I was reading this interview today with all of them, and Sarah Jessica Parker said about that she was like I was scared it can feel personal. It's a really weird thing when you are playing somebody who isn't liked and other actors who are not liking you are really good, and it she said it started to feel unpleasant. And Brian White who plays Patrick, who is Thad, he's one of the sons. He's his partner. He's the the deaf. Son. Yeah, he's the deaf, and the guy son. who he's... plays him is actually deaf as well. Yeah, exactly. And he said that you know, Sarah Jessica Parker was literally everybody's best friend, so it was eff- it was an effort to be angry with her, basically. And I think with that scene, <laughs> you're literally sat there and you're like, oh my god, oh my, god. it's like so cringe. And yeah. I I kind of got what she was trying to say to an extent, um, because what she was saying was obviously when you're when you're gay or whatever you do get more abuse you know you, yeah. you that's the thing they're going to go for if someone's going to pick on you or attack you that's what it's going to be about so she was saying why would you wish that and she kind of you know you kind of understand what she's saying she's saying it very badly yes cuz i don't think she's homophobic i just think she's like well why would you but then she really fucks herself over because at the start, you kind of think, I kind of get, she's saying, why would you, why, because. But, but the then, the yeah, it's when she says, why wouldn't you want them to be normal? Yes. And soon as she says like, that, I'm oh like, oh my no, God, why? They no. are normal. They are normal. And that's when she kind of loses all credibility. Because I think, like, the thing is, right, when you're at school, when you're young, or actually as an adult, you know, you can get bullied for anything. Like, nothing is off limits. and. So I got I got what she meant, but she just said it so wrong. So I don't think obviously there's anything wrong with, you know, having gay kids like well, no big fucking deal. But as soon as she said that, but surely you would want them to be normal. I was like, no, that that's when she lost, you know, and it was, then she turns around and she's like Everett. And he's like, she's like, I, I guess I'm not saying this correctly. And he goes, well, what are you trying to say? And he just did not have her back whatsoever he that's the thing I mean that's Mm. the point he didn't have her back at all through any of Mm. it not one bit because when she left when she because she gets up and obviously walks out because like what she did she shouldn't have said any of that like it was really wrong I I, the start I got what she was trying to say but it wasn't it wasn't coming out right at all and it was coming out like she was very homophobic but then you kind of think to her, okay, I get what she's trying to say very wrongly, but then she says the not normal thing. And then that's what makes her sound homophobic. Surely you'd want your kids to be normal because she, she is suggesting that Thad and Patrick isn't normal. And then she points to Patrick and goes, you must understand this because Patrick is also black. So it's like, obviously you'd get being abused because you're, and I'm just like, no, shut up. Shut up. And even the dad is like, that's an, very calmly he's like that's enough that's enough and she just can't shut up as she I keeps said, going as I said I think that she is neuro neuro atypical I really yeah, do exactly because there are so many situations that she is massively socially awkward in mm. but not one person stands up and says okay we get what you're trying to say maybe you said it in the wrong way and she really did Oh, God. There's no maybe about it. It was said in the wrong way. But at the same time, not one person sort of said, okay, stop having a go at her. But then I think the problem was from the minute she arrived there, they wanted to find something wrong with her. Yeah, exactly. Because I noticed when she got up and walked out, uh, Julie said, I know she she tried to kind of go, look, I know what she can be like. But the mother like was so fixated on the son which I can understand because she was like, look, you know, there's basically you're brilliant. You know, you're amazing. There's nothing wrong with you. 
everyone else in here is an asshole you're not type thing but what I thought there was when Meredith left and she got into the car and she crashed it he just sat there Everett just sat there it was it was Ben that had to get up and go and see to her the minute they met if you'd never seen it before you'd know what was going to happen with them yeah it was just so I mean obviously I've never said anything that stupid well I hope I I probably have but not obviously that (laughs) inappropriate because what she said was really fucking bad you know I've never been in that situation but like he just he you could tell that he it was like he almost wanted a reason to not be with her yeah oh yeah even though he went to his mum to ask her for the ring Mm. But I think that's be. I think he, because the way they kind of made fun of him, like take that tie off and look at you and all this kind of stuff, because of how he was dressed, he wasn't accepted like that. Because if you know, they the weird thing was right when I found about that family is because how against her they were, but yet when she didn't want to sleep in the same bed as him in the same house, which to be honest with you, I mean I always have with Dev, but had. I gone to Deb's mom, especially not that we're married, but before we were married, if she had said, look, I don't want you guys sleeping in the same room, I would have said, fine. I wouldn't have cared. I'd be like, yeah, whatever. It's your house. If that's how you feel completely. They are rules. That's it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Not, not if we were married. I think that was funny, but like, I mean, I don't agree with it, but I, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't care. I wouldn't give a kick up a fuss. Um, but when Meredith didn't want to do it, And they were like, oh, what's the mom was like, so you guys don't screw. And I thought you're so open minded about some things, but yet you won't open your mind to this girl. Like they weren't willing to even try. And even when she left and he was like, you know, I knew that I knew it was going to be difficult, but I need you all to pull your fangs out. You know, she means something to me. Yeah, but she didn't really. Yeah, but you should, you know, I think you I think you should try a bit harder like I can understand like in families and stuff things can be hard but like you know they there there was no chance for that she didn't stand a chance no of course she didn't you know but then they were they were fine and accepting of her when she wasn't with the golden child yeah that's true and when she fucked up so like for instance when you know she she made this dish that you know uh, this food dish and yeah, when oh, the one that she was making because her sister was coming. Yeah, and she like spilled all over her. So when she was like a mess in the kitchen because they open the door and it knocks into her, then they're all like all over her because you, you know it's like at the start they don't want to know her, but then Julie comes along and Julie fell when she was getting off the bus, yeah. and they all flocked around her. Oh my, they couldn't do enough for her. They couldn't do enough for Julie. And the mum was like, oh, what about her for Ben? You know, they were like trying, they wanted to set Julia with Ben. And then, but, and they didn't really give a shit about Meredith. But then when Meredith did that, that you can kind of see, because she was like a mess and like she wasn't this perfect looking girl that they, you know, she was when she came in. They all flocked around her then and was trying to clean her off. And then she was like, you know, what's so great about you lot? Once she started kind of standing up for herself and fighting back, then they started kind, then they started to turn a bit. Yeah, but that's, it shouldn't take that to be accepted. Of course not. That's, that's the thing that I find quite interesting is it is, the family as a whole is horrible. Yeah, they are. They're not, they're not a nice bunch at all. You know, I, I think that they're very unfair to her in this. Oh yeah, absolutely. And then they. She is isolated as well. No, she is. She doesn't have any, like even her sister's like, why did you call me here? Why am I here? Like she didn't even want to do it. And then like, I thought when she gave, so she, (laughs) I thought it was so funny. Like, and I think the dad kind of handled it really well is when he went upstairs to Ben. So Meredith has crashed the car back and forth and Ben goes out to see her and to see, is she okay? And then he brings her to the pub for some drinks and they get a bit drunk and she kind of lets loose and she opens up a bit, you know, she's, she's really kind of having a good time. Yeah. And then she wakes up the next day in Ben's room. I can only imagine the horror that you would feel if you woke up in the room of the brother of the guy that you were dating. And Even though he's played by Luke Wilson. Exactly. And then <laughs> the dad walks in and the way he just comes in and she she won't look at him and she's looking up to the side and he's like oh, I'm sorry I just thought I thought that scene was so funny that's the comedy 
yeah, that's, that's the comedy. That's it, though. There is so little comedy in it because mm. it is, it's more a tragedy rom with a bit of com in it. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just thought that that scene was um, really good. And I love it then when he comes out, because bless him, he's so like laid back and all this kind of stuff. And he comes out the shower and he's got a towel and he's like, oh, hey, because he hasn't done anything wrong. He no. basically looked after her. But, you know, I can understand her being a bit confused because she's woken up in his bed. And, like, and she, she was hits very him. drunk. Yeah. And she hits him. But he actually did do the right thing, to be fair to him. Um he slept on the couch or the floor or something, didn't he? And um, when she slaps him across the face and then goes downstairs and Julie's got the ring on and, you know, it just kind of really just, I don't know, it just kind of, and then she goes in, like Julie obviously has got this ring on and then they give out presents and she takes her hair down then. Do you notice after she's mm. come away from him, she then takes her hair down and she's looking a bit more casual. And then she gives them all that amazing present. And they just all kind of are like really like they, they, they're they speechless. That's the thing. I think that they underestimated her. And the problem was they were going on things that somebody who met her so briefly had to say to start with. That mm. was what gave them their initial impression was Amy having met her in the city once. Yeah, and Amy's a pain in the ass. So she, I don't think she'd have hardly liked anyone. Amy seems to thrive on being miserable yeah. and being a bitch. No, I agree. But I, I absolutely love that scene where they give her that picture and she just like, like they, they just don't know what to say and they're all looking at it and she, and she apologizes. She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought that was of you and Everett because it was of Amy, like the mother's pregnant yeah. in it and it, Amy's there. And I think that's when it actually starts to turn. And then she, t- she tells Everett she won't marry him. And he's like, I'm not going to marry no, you. Yeah. And she's like, you know, oh, she comes up here and then she sleeps with your brother. And the brother's like, we didn't sleep together. And she's like, does nobody love me? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was brilliant. Because like, you know, she's been through such a hard time of it. And then he's going, no. And she's just like, oh. But yeah, I thought yeah, that but was... that's the thing. I mean, she's being rejected in so many ways. Oh, and God. now she's being rejected for her sister. Exactly. Exactly. Because why is she got... Because, yeah, she's got the ring on. And remember when the sister kind of... Um, I can't remember what it said. But the sister kind of pulls her hand away, you know, because she's got the ring on and she kind of pulls her hand away so that she can't see the ring. But yeah, so everyone is like not on her side. And then even her sister, who she's brought in, to kind to of be on her right, side to be yeah. on her side that's it she's so um she's alone and every single person that she's attempt i mean she's not great at it admittedly mm. but then she has got a, a very large amount of social awkwardness about her mm. so her sisters abandoned her her almost not quite fiance abandoned her for her sister and everyone thinks her sister's the bee's knees. Yeah, because um, in an article I was reading, they were like, what would you do if your sister did that? And she, Sarah Jessica Parker was kind of like, didn't want to answer it because she has a few sisters. She's got quite a big family, I think, Sarah Jessica Parker. And, but like, like, what would you do? Because I think, obviously, at the end, Julie ends up with Everett and she ends up with... Ben. Lou, uh, ben. But does that make it okay because she's gone off with his brother and she's, you know, it. It, it, may, it begs the question what was Everett's motivation in bringing her to meet his family in the first place? I think that's because he thinks that's what he should be doing rather than what he wanted to be doing. Yeah, but then what he should be doing, given his family, none of his family is stayed upright uptight or sensible they're all pretty bohemian in their behavior so why would he think that his family was ever going to make this woman who was everything that they disliked welcome well I think for him that's what he because of the job he has and the life he leads I think that's what he thought his other half should be because you sometimes see these couples and they're like, like me and my husband, we're very different from each other. We couldn't be more different. But you sometimes see couples and they're basically carbon copies of each other. 
Yeah, but he and wasn't, I think, was he? No, but I think that's what he thought he should have been. I think she was, he was this big business guy, you know, in his suit, looking all like completely well-groomed. So he needed a businesswoman who was, looked amazing and was completely well-groomed too. And, and wouldn't fit in with his family. Exactly. Ever. And then, and then, but that didn't, but it's like, it didn't matter because that's what he wanted. Because when he says, you know, I understood you guys were going to be difficult and, you know, you need to take your fans out, but she's someone that's important to me. So like he expected them to act in the way that he wanted because she was important to him because, and I actually agree with that because she hadn't actually done anything wrong. No, that's the thing she hadn't, but ultimately. They just didn't like her. Yeah. Ultimately he brought her into a situation he knew was going to be difficult. Mm. He didn't prepare her for the situation. No. He took her to a family Christmas. Mm. And what is, there are certain situations, I think, certain events that you do not bring someone to and dump them in at the deep end. No. And a family Christmas, especially if the family is as close as his appeared to be, mm. is not the place to introduce somebody new. No. No. No, I agree. I agree 100%. What did you think about the whole mum story? Of the fact was, that she wouldn't be here the following year? That's the thing. I found it interesting because... It didn't justify her behavior by any stretch of the imagination. No. She was, you could see that there was that underlying sadness. Mm. You could see that she was scared and upset and everything else. And she was trying to keep it together for her family. And it was almost as though she was selfishly trying to keep all the children close to her. And that was another reason why she was pushing Meredith out. Yeah, because she turns around and she said... Um... Didn't she say at the dinner party, she goes, oh, I wanted all my, my boys to be gay and then they wouldn't leave, leave me because yes. the girl turned around and goes, oh, what about us type thing? Um, which is weird because, you know, as we saw with Thad, he's gay and he's in a relationship and off with his fella. Like he's not like living at home, you know, just because no, he's gay. very, the thing is he's very close to his mother. And I think that the thing is with... As I, I've noticed in my own family, my I've, I've got a younger brother and a younger sister. And mm. every year we spend Christmas with my sister. Every single year without fail, mm. Christmas with my sister. But my brother, when he's in a relationship and he's been with his current partner now for nine years, I think. Mm. And, he, and when he was with his previous partner, he would spend part of Christmas with their family. Mm. Whereas when he was single, he spent every Christmas with us. Yeah. So there's a di there's a difference with, I think, with uh, the daughter and the son relationships in that the daughter can actually dictate where they spend Christmas. Mm. She can say, right, every year we're going to my parents or we'll go to your mum's every other year. Whereas with a son, they don't have that same thing in a heterosexual relationship yeah no I actually I I to an extent I agree with that because I know some women who every you know they always go home and I like Dev doesn't go home Christmas he me and him do Christmas do you know what I mean yeah. um so yeah there are a few I know like that and I I know a person and they always go to the mothers for Christmas and I says well what about you and he goes yeah but she she just won't have it yeah. Like the, 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 the partner, she just won't have it. And my thing is like, it's a bit different for me at the moment. Cause we've got Riley, but like they, they don't have any kids. Cause I want to do Christmas. Cause like I'm the mom now and I want to do Christmas for my child. But like the person I'm talking about, they don't have children. And I'm like, well, could you not alternate it? You know, one, you know, type thing. Cause that's what we used to do. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's, it's a very strange you know like I suppose I can understand people wanting pe people around for Christmas but um a you know, I think a mother's bond with her sons is interesting mm. think of the Oedipus complex for it as an example but <laughs> yeah I know it is it is an interesting thing because as I said with my brother when he was single he spent every single Christmas with my mum every single Christmas and it was always at my sister's because she's the one who had the kids therefore 
we had to go to them rather than them traveling because it was far more practical Mm. and it still is far more practical. But now he's got a partner. They go to his partner's parents Mm. every other Christmas, but they will still have part of Christmas with our family, just not necessarily Christmas Day. And my mum (laughs) still gets a little bit annoyed about it at times because she'd like all of her children to be with her at Christmas. But then... The same could be said for any mother wanting all of their children with them. So it has to be equal. Well, exactly. That's the thing, because, you know, if your mum gets annoyed about your brother not coming home, then, you know, what about his partner's mum? Is she not allowed to be annoyed too? Like, do you know what I mean? So if you do it fairly. Yeah. No, no, I get that. I get that. So, yeah, I get like, I mean, can understand, especially this year, it's good that she's got them all there, um, the, the mother. Because obviously it's her last year. But she you know, hasn't it, told them all yet, that has she? No, she hasn't. But I think when it's interesting when like the year has passed and it's the following Christmas and Thad and Patrick come back and they've got their little boy. And see, because that's the thing when they're at that dinner table, um, Julie says to them, because Patrick's black and Thad is white. And she says to him, look, you know, I hope this isn't inappropriate, but is there a preference on the race? Now, she asks that question in a very, you know, it, it, appropriate way. Like, there's nothing wrong After with that fact. question. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, no, we don't carry the way as long. And I don't think there's any wrong with, anything wrong with that question because, you know, th- th- that's for, some people might want that. They might want what, you know, the, the skin color they are and stuff like that. And I think that's, again, the difference between her and Meredith is Meredith was trying to ask, a, I think had Julie asked the same question, as Meredith about the the gay thing, it wouldn't have been a problem because she would have asked it in a way that wasn't disrespectful yeah. or coming I across think, like... Yeah, I think one of yeah. the issues with Meredith and the way that she asks questions and does things is the fact that she is trying to get to the core of the issue incredibly quickly and isn't thinking yeah. about how yeah. somebody else may interpret what she's saying. Exactly. But yeah, that's the thing. I mean, I've asked... I used to work with a guy who was married to a Muslim girl. He was from England, um, white male married to a Muslim girl who had, you know, the, oh, what's it called? You know, the jab. Yeah. And I used to ask him loads of questions, loads of questions. And, but I always said to him, you know, if this is inappropriate, like, don't, you know, I, I apologize. I'm just, I'm just really curious, like to learn about what it is. And he was like, no, I love it. I love that you want to know about this because ask me anything. And I did, you know, and that was the difference, you know, and but I think I think had had Meredith asked the question differently and had not put the end bit in about Mm -hmm. being normal, then she would have been fine. But it's just wording is everything really at the end of the day, isn't it? It's like how you say something, you know, if it comes out wrong. But I do think that they they really all kind of like laid into her. And I think Everett, because he knows her, because when Julie said, look, she, you know, I know what she's like, but she basically doesn't mean it by that. He should have said that too. Yeah, he should have done, especially if he knows yeah. her as well as he, as so well that he's bringing her home to meet his family. But then, I mean, that's not the only example of them crashing down on her and nobody mm. defending her. Mm. Another example of that is this is when they're playing charades. Oh my God, that was so bad because she wasn't doing anything. No. I mean, Amy set her up for a fall. Yeah, she and did. And Ben is the one who calls her out on it, yeah. not Everett. Exactly. Ben again. Mm. Yeah, Everett just doesn't want to know. And even like when she was, when she didn't want to sleep in the same room and she ended up in Amy's room and she's like, I'm sorry if you're putting anyone out. And the mum's like, no, it's fine. And Amy's like, me, you're putting me out. Like, who does that? Well, somebody who's acting like a five-year-old. Yeah. That's who does that. Yeah. But I think it's interesting in the end, like, after the mother's passed away and then once the mother's passed away they become a very close group it's you know? almost as though they were competing to be the center of Sybil's attention yeah and I wonder be- if there's a reason they chose the name Sybil what do you mean wasn't there there was a famous case years ago of multiple personality disorder of a woman called Sybil oh and also, isn't the Sybil also another name for the oracle in Greek mythology? Oh, I don't know that. But they, yeah, because it's interesting when they come back and like 
Meredith is dressed very casually. Her hair is down. And she, you know, he's more relaxed. Everett's more relaxed with Julie. And she's hugging and kissing Thad and Patrick. And, you know, Amy and her are getting on. And she's hugging, obviously, Ben, because that's her partner. And everyone's just kind of getting on, you know? Yeah. And it's also interesting how the last shot, apart from the one on the photo, is of Amy. Yeah, in in the you can see the reflection of it in that picture, yeah. can't you? Yeah, I thought that actually when I was watching it yesterday, I was like, oh, that's interesting because it's like just the two of them hugging and you see her and then it just ends. Yeah, and it makes you wonder where the focus, the focus of this, was it more about Amy's development as a character because she mm. was a snarky mean teenager and she wasn't even a teenager anymore so she had no excuse for being this girl who was in such a negative space that she was so determined to belittle somebody she barely knew yeah she'd only met her once hadn't she exactly and Mm. to everybody Mm. I mean she was nasty to about her to Thad she was nasty about her to her mum, to her sister, to Patrick. And it was almost as though there was a vendetta against her for no reason other than the fact that she was coming home with Everett. Yeah, no, I agree. She was totally against her. She didn't stand a chance. And then at the end, I suppose, like you said, she's with that guy. She's calmed down a hell of a lot. Even the way she dresses and the way her hair is, she's very much, it's funny actually, because when you think about it, you've got Meredith that's completely like cashed it down and she's more conservative looking. Her hair is very well done, but not, you know, it's, it's very, I don't know, it's very Charlotte from Sex and the City and she's got that red top on and she just looks very well presented for use of a better term. So it's like the, the roles have changed a little bit it was almost as though the influence of her mother had been removed she was no longer maybe she was no longer able to hide because I think that Sybil while she was the understanding protector of her children she also coddled them oh god and their their dad definitely did not do that no 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 I agree she allowed them to get away with way too much no I agree I agree and um, but yeah, it it just changed a bit when she she passed away. So it did. I mean, it but, was sad that she passed away, hmm. and it was a very obvious plot device, especially as it was used so close to the end. You knew it was going to happen, but it was she was almost like the leading mean girl. <laughs> she was Regina George. What the mum? Yeah, yeah, she was quite mean in it, wasn't she? But it was like she felt she could justify it. And they wanted her to make every single wrong step that she made. They were almost guiding her to them. Yeah, exactly. So they could be like, see, see. We told you. Told yeah. you she wasn't worth you. They have a very, very elevated opinion of Everett. I didn't like him as a character. No, he wasn't very nice, was he? He was weak. Extremely. Because the minute he saw her through his family's eyes, she was never going to be good enough. No, I agree. I agree. He was so weak. But yeah, I think that's, you know, what makes this film, like I know I'm a horror movie podcast, but (laughs) this film like is your worst nightmare when it comes to meeting family, family, you know, because it's it's scary enough when you when you have to meet new people, especially your partner's family and you dread it. And if they act like if I had gone and met his his lot, my partner's lot and they acted like like this. I mean, I probably would have said a few things. Like, so I wouldn't have acted like Meredith. I'd have been blunt. What's your fucking problem? <laughs> Straight but off the you, bat. But would you have stayed involved with him though, if they'd been like this? I. It would have depended on him, to be honest with you. If he had stood back and let them do that, then no. I'm like, no, I'm not dealing with. As this. I said, if he'd been like Everett, yeah, in this situation, no. no. No, but if I if I'd walked into, I mean, they know me well enough, and they know that I won't take any crap. Now, no, I wouldn't off back then either. No, what I mean is they know you now. Oh yeah, yeah. Obviously, yeah. They didn't know me at the time, but if if I had walked in to anyone's home and they treated me like they did, I would have called them out on it 
straight away. And I would have just left. And then if he had been like, oh, I'd be like, no, not for me. Because I just wouldn't let anyone treat me like that. Because they were despicable the way they acted. And it's just oh, yeah. not... It's just not my way. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't have put up with it. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean, that is the the horror element is the fact that this can and does happen. Oh god, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a reality, especially mm. where the matriarch is the strongest member of the family. Oh god, yeah. I mean, like you know, like I said, luckily for me, I I didn't have any issues. They were they couldn't have been nicer when I met them. He was the one that wound me up. Oh, my sisters are going to be so mean to you. He did that on purpose, I bet you. No, he said to me, he actually thought that they'd be really mean to me. And I was like, (laughs) and then after knowing them, I was like, why? I mean, one of them, he was like, she's really shy. So I'm really good with shy people. Um, The other one was a bit harder to break, but she was never rude to me or horrible to me. She's just, you know, she just doesn't open up as quickly. Um, But, you know, he, he couldn't have been more wrong. You know, and the mother was lovely to me, but he, yeah, but I could imagine, oh, no, no, no. If if you, if you were going to me, if anyone's listening to this and you're the mother or the father and someone's bringing home a person, because just be it, don't be a bitch or a twat. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the thing. I mean, these people, they are going, especially if you're meeting hmm. the family en masse, the, that individual who is coming home with your son or daughter hmm. is going to be terrified but equally, if you're the person that's going back to meet them, don't be a bitch or a twat. <laughs> if you're if you're going to meet them, bring a bottle of wine, some flowers, just something. Either side, just don't be a bitch or a twat. <laughs> I imagine that the funny thing is with Meredith, I imagine that she went around with a perpetual headache mm. because her hair was tied back so tightly. Oh God, yeah. yeah. I've had to take mine down today. I've had it in a braid all day because my hair is quite long and unmanageable mm. and I had to take it down because I had a headache yeah I've done that before I've done that before yeah hers was really fucking tight um and she kept doing that thing where she'd like brush it down didn't she yeah she kept on doing that to make sure no hair is right place yeah yeah oh yeah when she was like <clears throat> when she did that all the time yeah but that was the thing they made it a bigger thing than it needed to be because yeah. that was one yeah, of the that was Amy. That Amy was telling everybody, oh, she makes that she funny make noise with her yeah. throat. Hmm. Yeah. <sighs> cool. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, but yeah, I think uh, this is your horror story for meeting <laughs> your partner's family. <laughs> <laughs> and we I hope sh- it's not like this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, if you've got any um, great stories about meeting in-laws, let me know. I'd be interested to uh, to find out. My last two boyfriends were orphans. <laughs> okay, my last two boyfriends were orphans. It would have made my mum supremely happy if I'd married either of them because there would have never been any competition over Christmas. That's true, that's true. Um, <laughs> such a rat. My last two boyfriends were orphans. Um, no, my last... Well, I've only ever had two partners, but my last one, he 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 was a mama's boy. Yeah, and that's sometimes... He was a mama's boy. Yeah, it, it caused problems every now and again. I was going to say, my brother's a tiny bit of a mama's boy, but he's growing out of it slowly. I mean, he's mm. 46. He's growing out of it slowly. He's 46. Yes. <sighs> I would never go off with a mama's boy. That's one thing Dev is not, is a mama's boy. That's, and I very well, much that's, well, that's the thing. I mean, I never. My last two boyfriends weren't mama's boys either. It was a bit difficult <laughs> when you're an orphan. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking terrible. <laughs> God. God. That's well, mad. That's, that's, hey, everyone's got a weird story, and mine was that. He did have an ex-wife and a child, though. Oh. My last <laughs> Lovely. Not that he saw either of them, though. He did have her surname. Huh? Don't. Okay, so that's, 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 that's an off-air conversation. Um, <laughs> but as I said, he was an orphan, so he didn't have a he didn't have a mother that I had to meet. Yeah, knowing me, I'd have done as good an impression on them as Meredith did on the Stones. <laughs> well, I'm still allowed into the house of the Purdens, so I must be doing something okay. Well, yes, obviously. Yeah. Um, cool. Have you got anything else to add? No. Oh, I did find out. It actually, you know, we were talking about profits and everything. It came out the same time as the Chronicles of Narnia, the first film. 
and Peter Jackson's King Kong. So to get a $92.9 million share of the box office was pretty good going considering those two films were blockbusters. Yeah, no, I've I've been like reading a few things and this seems to be quite a popular film. Like I think like the holiday and stuff like that, it's just like one of people's go-tos. Yeah. You know, it's not that you go, oh my God, it's like the most amazing film ever, but it's just a nice film to watch. It's a bit messed up. And I suppose as well with this, you can relate, Yeah, you know, you probably people can relate to certain things about it. It's more realistic, I think. Mm, than, yeah. It's far more realistic than The Holiday, which while being a lovely film is so unrealistic. I mean, seriously, if you did a house swap with somebody, mm. would it be a, would it be a, multi-million dollar mansion in the Hollywood Hills or no. would it be somewhere in the valley? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And also the guy who wrote this film also wrote and directed Monte Carlo starring Selena Gomez, which I actually personally really like. <laughs> I've never heard of it. It's on Netflix and on Amazon at the moment. Oh yeah, I've never heard of it. I've already forgotten what it was called. Monte Carlo. <laughs> what do you know, that? like the place? Yeah, I do. But I'll forget again in a minute. Um, cool. I'll send you a text. <laughs> ah, great. Um, okay, well, why don't you let everyone know where they can find you to hear uh, your episode on Noel? <laughs> oh, my episode on Noel comes out on the 20th of December and it can be found on Spotify, Amazon, Google, iTunes. And you can now leave reviews on Spotify. Well, you can't. You can leave star ratings. Can you? You can indeed. They released it this week. Oh, nice. Yeah, so you can now actually leave star ratings on Spotify, which is really nice. And you can find me on Twitter at need underscore three underscore mugs. I am super busy on there. I do a lot of retweeting and a lot of really random tweets. And I'm on Instagram at not before coffee podcast. Cool. Uh, Thanks very much for coming on. And I guess I will chat to you all next year, as will Ray after her Noel and you're doing another episode. Oh I'm no, it's just kind of a like looking back on. I'm doing a looking back retrospective at the end yeah. of the year. I meant to be, so I maybe I will. <laughs> so you can find out all about the number of books I've read this year, yeah. which will have increased by New Year. Yeah. Um, cool. All right then. Well, I will chat to you again very soon, as will Ray. Bye. Bye.